Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've waited for. Greatest Showman Revisited Greatest Showman has now made $361 million worldwide, which tells us a couple of things. While I would argue that Greatest Showman was not well advertised, it made up for it in the fact that it was so well liked by its viewers. The first weekend that it came out, it only made $8 million opening weekend and was pretty much going to be considered a flop. You could argue that, oh, people were waiting to see it till Christmas because it came out on December 22nd. Well, the problem with that is that Christmas Day sales didn't make that much of an impact. The real difference in momentum came after Christmas when everyone that went to see it told pretty much everyone they knew how amazing it was. Another thing this tells us is that hard work pays off. And lastly, it tells us, in my opinion, Critics often cannot be trusted. Observe, Greatest Showman has 55% on the tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes, and yet it has 89% from the audience. Hmm. On Metascore, it has 48 points. I don't know, no one really cares about Metascore. Meanwhile, on IMDb, based on viewers' opinions, it has an 8.0. I've talked a lot about the praise that I have for Greatest Showman, but now that it's so successful, I can tell you some of my complaints. Something that the critics didn't touch on that I really think they should have was the use of auto-tune, or rather the overuse of. Hugh Jackman and Kiala Settle are Broadway-trained performers who have spent their entire careers making sure that their voices sound spectacular on stage. And with the use of auto-tune, we're making them into bad pop singers. Because the thing is, vibrato just doesn't sound good on auto-tune. My next complaint is that I wish that Pasek and Paul had made the music old school Broadway style. Now I understand that their explanation for this is that they felt like uh, P.T. Barnum was so ahead of his time that his music should also be ahead of his time and have 21st century vibes. The thing is, P.T. Barnum's story takes place in the late 1800s, so ahead of his time could definitely mean 1950s, which means we could have had all the same music, but we could have slowed it down and had more piano and had more vibrato and had more expectations from our singers because they'd have to sing live. Now, I'm not saying we have to trapeze and sing live, that's crazy. I feel like The Greatest Showman is a great example of what musical theater should be, and I just wish that they had kept the music in the same vein. But that's just me. I'm a golden era of Broadway fan. Take me back to the 1950s and 60s in music and dance and nothing more because that period of time was awful for pretty much everyone else. That's all I've got for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.